We're gonna skip all of the pleasantries for this video intro because we all know why we're here. The Nuggets are in the Western Conference Finals, so are the Lakers. This is a revenge series. Let's talk about how these two teams match up now. This series is going to test us in a, in a couple of different ways, and I'll, I'll get to those ways in a second. But like I said, man, this is the revenge series. This is this is what part two, I think, of the redemption tour for this season because we beat the Suns last round, and now we're facing the Lakers, who were at one point already, in a way, in the way of us heading toward the NBA Finals. So this is going to be a tough series for both teams involved, and I want to talk about some of the specific key points that I think are gonna win this series and talk about how the Nuggets fare against the top defense and how the Lakers will fare against the top offense. It's a lot of things to talk about, so let's get right into it. I wanna start off with probably the biggest thing that the Nuggets are gonna have to deal with and that is Anthony Davis. He is having a tremendous playoff run. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but they'll be on the screen right now. He's playing defensive player of the year defense. Point blank period. He had what, 26 some blocks, I think, against the Memphis Grizzlies in round one. He played phenomenal defense against Steph Curry and that different type of offense in round two. He's facing a different, different type of offense in the Nuggets, but I still think he's going to be really effective. But I also think there are ways that the Nuggets can mitigate that type of matchup. But again, that is something we'll talk about in just a second. How the Lakers decide to use Jokic on Anthony Davis is going to be probably the most important thing for Los Angeles. We saw in the regular season in that game against the 76ers where the 76ers won, they were putting PJ Tucker on Jokic. They were putting a smaller, sturdier defender on Jokic and having their shot blocker Joel Embiid roam off of a non-shooter and help off. I imagine it's going to be something similar. The thing with the Lakers is that they can go two different ways and be perfectly fine, I think. But I think they're going to start with Vando on Jokic and have AD roam off of AG because they're going to make Aaron Gordon hit a three ball at a consistent clip to mitigate AD's foul trouble slash responsibilities on Jokic as a one-on-one -on -one defender. The thing that I think one of the things that worries me most about this matchup is the Vando X uh anthony davis pick and roll coverage because jared vanderbilt is an incredible point of attack defender he knows how to get around screens he's really active on the ball he's a really good disruptor he plays lanes really well he can get up there and block a shot he's a tenacious rebounder he is basically everything that you would want in a defense only type of player even though he's not defense only he's defense mainly and kind of all the same things go for anthony davis too right when we talk about pnr coverage against the nuggets we saw it against the warriors with anthony davis he has really active hands he can both try to block a shot and at the same time have his hand down to block the pass after his contest. He's a different type of monster in these situations, but I think this is a different caliber of pick and roll that he's going to be facing because in the first round, it was what, Ja and, and, and Xavier Tillman or Jaron Jackson Jr. And of the three PNR coverages he's gonna face, that is by far the weakest one. Then he went on to Steph and Draymond, which of course is tried and true, but Draymond is not the spacer that Jaron Jackson or Nikola Jokic are gonna be. So again, different type of matchup, but AD has a little bit, little less responsibility in that type of PNR. The Jamal and Jokic one is going to be the one that tests him the most. Jamal Murray can hit that mid range, moving, not moving. He can make really tough shots in that area because I'm sure Vando is gonna be giving him hell. And Jokic, that short roll area, is his area. If any other Laker besides Anthony Davis does not make the right decision on this PNR, Jokic is going to abuse that. And that's the thing that's gonna win the Nuggets the game. The Lakers defense, all five of them, have to be on point. And I wanna, I wanna mention this point and I don't want people to get confused or anything. I do not think, nor should anyone think, that Anthony Davis is going to stop Nikola Jokic. This is the first offensive-minded guard that Anthony Davis has had to guard possibly straight up in the postseason so far. And he ca Jokic causes so many problems, especially when you talk about his outside game because he is shooting 47% from three in this postseason on three and a half attempts a game. Phenomenal numbers and I think should scare Anthony Davis because while Jokic is not the highest volume and he's not going to get up to seven attempts per game, the threat is there. So Anthony Davis on a pick and roll cannot play drop all the way in the paint against Nikola Jokic. That's going to be an issue. And I think that's where we win this series. As I mentioned before, the other non-Anthony Davis defenders have to have their rotations down to a T. 
because our ball movement is very crisp. And when it starts with Nikola Jokic on the short roll, when it gets out to the corner, when it swings around the wing, and then when someone makes a sellout contest and now we're playing five on four, that's gonna be a big problem for the Lakers to deal with. And it's happened a lot because the Nuggets pride themselves on outside shooting, efficient outside shooting, shooting 39% this postseason from three and good, crisp, timely ball movement. We're going to make AD work. We're going to make Darvin Ham have to switch up the defensive schemes against us because one isn't going to work, two probably isn't going to work either. He's going to have to cycle through a couple of them, watch how the matchups are playing out, watch who's guarding Jokic the best and stopping his production the best and go from there. It's going to be a lot. But back to the jump shooting thing. We are a jump shooting team and we're going to have to beat the Lakers that way. Anthony, or sorry, Aaron Gordon, as I mentioned before, his three point shooting is probably the most important factor of this series. He has to hit the corner three. There is no if, ands, or but. He needs to put some scare in Anthony Davis. He needs to make sure that Anthony Davis has to guard Jokic one on one because that potentially leads to more foul trouble, that leads to more tiredness and fatigue from Anthony Davis from having to bang down low in the post, that leads to a lot of good things for the Nuggets, and it leads to a lot more space for Jokic to work one-on-one. -on -one. That's what we want. You have to, you have to, you have to find a way to negate Anthony Davis's humongous defensive impact via the jump shooting, via pulling him out of the paint as far as you can. Because even against Steph Curry, someone whose range is quite literally limitless, Anthony Davis was still able to play protector. He was still able to play in the paint. We have to hit the kickouts and our ball movement is gonna be the thing that wins us this series. Now I wanna take this over to the flip side. Anthony Davis's offensive bag is something that we are going to have to take into account as well. Because vice versely, or vice versely, I think that's how you say that, Anthony Davis is the best offensive center that we have played this postseason so far. He is someone who is shooting 64% within five feet of the rim. His mid-range game is up and we all know that the lob threat will be there and we don't have the physicality to defend it every single time efficiently. We don't have anyone that can match up one for one against Anthony Davis. He's probably going to have to beat us if the Lakers want to win the series because we match up pretty well against everyone else. Jamal, KCP, Bruce can all handle their guard rotations pretty well. AG will do a good job on LeBron because of the physicality, because of the speed, because of the athleticism. MPJ can be a really good help defender off of Vando, depending on how much they want to play Vando in this series. This next point I want to move on to is our defensive matchup as a team, because of course, defense is the thing that's been winning us so many games this postseason. It's put us in a position to be favorites to come out of the West. And specifically against the Lakers, our backline rotations have to be the best that they've ever been in this postseason. The one thing about having to guard LeBron is that he operates in a similar way to Jokic and that taking away LeBron's playmaking is one of the ways to slow down his production and slow down his impact on the game. But if you let LeBron get opportunities where he's drawing in the defense and then leaving open shooters out on the perimeter, he's going to make those passes. The Lakers are an interior force. They like the dribble drives. We need to find a way to mitigate the playmaking value of LeBron James, the playmaking value of a D'Angelo Russell, and the playmaking value of someone like Austin Reeves, who knows how to drive in and force fouls. The Lakers get a lot of free throws because of their style of play. The Nuggets cannot fall prey to this style of play. The Suns and the T-Wolves are teams that were perimeter focused and teams that struggled with cross-court passing. So there were opportunities for our defense to recover when a dribble drive did create an open shot on the perimeter, they just didn't have the personnel to get the ball out there and get a clean open shot most of the time. LeBron is that guy. He will force open shots. He will find the open man. There will be some shots for the Lakers and they have to knock them down. I think discipline is going to be our best friend in this series. Like I said, the Lakers shoot a ton of free throws. It's been a talking point all playoffs, all season long. How you view that discrepancy that they normally have against teams is up to you. That's not what we're here to talk about right now. I'm here to talk about how we mitigate that impact. And I'm looking specifically at AG and MPJ, not biting on the up fakes, not giving them easy fouls, not putting us in the bonus really, really quickly like we saw in a game against the Suns where it was the second quarter, nine minutes left, and the Nuggets were already in the bonus. 
and that hurt us really, really bad. I think Jokic this series probably goes back to drop coverage due to the lack of Lakers shooting at his position. Anthony Davis is not going to stretch the floor like that. He is not going to be shooting threes. He'll get to the mid range, so Jokic can't play a deep drop. Another thing we're gonna have to take a look at is off ball LeBron. It's a new development with the injury, with more on ball talents for the Lakers. His role on ball has kind of reduced, and I think it's making the Lakers a better team. They're guards have, like I said, have a lot more on-ball tasks than any other Braun guard besides Kyrie Irving. I mentioned Austin Reeves and how he can get downhill and make a pass. D'Lo can make a shot and make a pass. Dennis Schroeder can handle the ball and is a pretty good point of attack defender. There's a lot that the Nuggets are going to have to account for for a team that earlier in the season was looking abysmal on offense. This is a brand new team, which is why it makes this series preview just a little bit more difficult because we haven't seen a full matchup of these two teams all season, let alone with the new roster that the Lakers have put together. And lastly, I think I wanna close out this video uh, with just a couple of loose thoughts because again, the series has very few, I think, super duper concrete things when it comes to specific matchups in this series with these specific team constructions. There's just not enough to go on to make a lot of concise predictions. I think the Nuggets are gonna win this series in six. I think overall our offense is just such a juggernaut that while the Lakers defense is is really good they're going to be playing a math game they're going to be playing a three versus two game they're going to have to make us miss three pointers and that is a really hard thing to do because the nuggets are not the highest volume three-point shooting team we are just the most efficient and that is going to be a big talking point in this series that is going to be a big talking point in the wins that the nuggets have you'll see a huge discrepancy in the points scored in the nuggets lost this series and a nuggets dub a nuggets dub is going to look like 115 to 125 points a Nuggets L is probably going to look like 105 because the Lakers defense is that good. Our wings and our shooting is going to win us this series. AG and MPJ have to have their best series of the postseason so far. KCP needs to continue to be a marksman. AG's threes have to drop. I cannot express that enough how much we're going to need his three-point shooting in this series. But overall, I fully believe in our game. I think our defense has shown a lot of things that we are throwing people off and, and giving them a new look and a new thought process on how they view this team. We've given them new tenacity, we've given them new PNR coverage, and we've given them just an overall better impact on the game on the defensive side of the ball. It's a lot to ignore if you wanna say that the Nuggets easily lose this series. Neither team is going to easily lose this series. But again, I got Nuggets in six. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.